All right, let's have a look underneath the skirt of a Lamborghini kit car and see what's under there. I know you want to see it. So yeah, I need to work on the headlights. I'm going to replace the headlight motors. And uh, I've yet to look underneath this thing. It barely fits on the lift. Look how wide those back tires are. So I, I haven't got a chance to look up underneath this thing yet. I want to see what's under here. It's either really amazing or it's going to be scary. Let's find out. All right, first thing we see here is they have put skateboard trucks up under this, which is a common thing to do to these type of cars. Let's go up under here and have a look. Wow, that's done really well. I mean, that's substantial. And that's really cool because there's going to be times that you're going to come rolling in and you're going to scrape and this is not replaceable. You know, if I was smart, you know what I would do? I would take this thing off, I would fix it up and then I would make a mold of it. Because I guarantee you at some point I'm going to wreck it and I'm going to need another one. I mean, it's been whacked a couple of times. You can see it needs some repair there. But, um, hmm. So, one of the things you notice here is there's like no air funneling going on here. Like, like these are supposed to funnel air, I think, to the brakes. And then these are supposed to funnel fresh air into the cabin, I believe. And these are just supposed to bring in fresh air. So this needs to have a shroud that comes down and funnels this air away from the cab. The rest of this looks like it's just straight for Euro. And this thing hasn't been... Um, stretched or anything remove these drip trays Ooh, it's wet it's wet back here check out this little motor mount that's cool nice fresh filter though there's the starter i believe doesn't look too hard to get to well maybe it is i don't know my buddy mike was saying that the starter might be going bad and he said it was an engine out job and it looks like you can just pull these crate this whole cradle out pretty easily because we were thinking about changing out the whole engine. Get that out of the way. Wow, this rear shroud is actually really done really well. Wow, that's really good. You know, we come back here. That's actually really good. Look at that. A lot of these cars don't have that shroud. Now, that, I'm pretty sure that should be made of metal and it should be ventilated, but that's actually really good. You know, the ass end of this thing looks fantastic. You know, I know it's a kit car, I know it's a fear, oh, people shit all over these cars, but check out this extension with this cat. The fact that it has a cat, it's amazing. This is the first time I've ever been under here, though. Never had a look under here. Fuel filter. I've never been under a Fiero. Now, normally these cars would be stretched about six inches or eight inches, depending on whatever. Um, this one hasn't been stretched, it's a stubby. But looking at this, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Now, I was trying to gain access um, to this motor and whatnot here so I could work on, I want to change out the headlight motor. But, you know, I don't know if I necessarily needed to put it on the lift. Maybe it'll make it easier. I don't know. But um, this radiator is obviously new. I, I don't know if this fan is, a, is, is adequate, but I think it is. I just think it just, all it needs really is some air funneling. You know, with a little bit of shrouding here, which could be done with uh, some various materials. You know, just build a shroud that comes straight back here and then mounts to this sway bar here, or, or this uh, stabilization. But you know, there's not much to this car. And I'm never gonna drive it fast. I'm not gonna drive it Lamborghini-like. It's, you know, it's really cool actually. So yeah, I ordered, um some new rebuilt motors and what they do is they rebuild these and they put in um, new metal gears instead of plastic gears and they make them really robust just they just rebuild them these are a couple hundred dollars each and then you have to send your old ones back as a core now up until i want to say from 1982 to 1987 i could be wrong maybe 86 but around 87 or 88 they changed the way these motors now this is a 1988 Trans Am. One of the ways you could tell is when you look at the headlights. They have a little bit different system on them. Now, 
I have a 1988 Fiero and it has these. And so these were a newer, improved motor. These motors are much cheaper and they're much more reliable and you're better off changing into that system. I'm not sure what the differences are, but those always work fantastically. Never seem to have any problems. But these, I've owned a lot of Trans Ams in my day. And these things fail a lot. And also the little relay that goes to them. This little relay, oops. These things go bad all the time. Anyway, we're gonna change out at least one, if not both of these, because only one headlight goes up and down. They both go up, the other one doesn't come down. And the best thing to do is just to change them. Now, I was considering removing these blocks and then driving past this point so that I would have easier access. Or because I need to be where this shelf is. Um, and that's a sketchy proposition. You know, you gotta have somebody eyeball you, make sure you don't drive off the ramp because I can't clear that bump stop. That would make things easier for me if this went all the way to the front and then I, I could just reach up in there and get to it. Um, I really like these wheels. These are really good. Okay, sorry I didn't get a chance to record all this. I was busy. Put the DeLorean down there. Move this to the edge here. It's not going anywhere, but now I have access to this. So I actually, I actually lower this. Um, make sure it clears my Mr. Fusion though. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Fusion is clear. So what I can do. Actually, I have to use both hands to operate this thing. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now, yeah, I got easy access to all of this. There it is. Okay. I see how it goes. Not much to it though, huh? Hmm. I do like the way these roller skates work. That's cool. So, yeah, this is perfect. Hopefully it just doesn't drip on the DeLorean. I should probably put the drip trays. I'm gonna put the drip trays back in. I mean, it doesn't drip much, but I prefer zero. So yeah, this is a whole lot less janky than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I'm trying to see exactly where the body makes contact with the frame. But you can see how, you know, DNR replicars, they did a really good job on this thing, I gotta say. Not so good on the wiring and other certain things. Oh look, there's an alarm, look at that. Look at that melted wire there. Look at that. See, that stuff, that stuff is bad. That's where this car failed in the electrical. We've got this access point to the trunk. There's a temperature. Oh, that's part of the air conditioning. Ooh, you know, I wonder if we could get this air conditioner to work. There's the blower motor and the dryer. I wonder, hmm, because there's the blower box and the dryer. There's no condenser though here, is there? Or no, there is, there is a condenser. Huh. But I think they did a good job on this. I've seen some other kit cars that are way more crappy than this. If you're watching this and you're going, oh, what a piece of shit, you should take a look at an actual Kuntosh. They're not built much better. I mean, they're made out of aluminum, but that doesn't mean they're better. They're not fine quality craftsmanship, folks. I mean, but like, this is firm. Look at that. That doesn't budge, bro. That is firm, firm, firm. So it is attached very well. Ah, oh boy, guys, you know what? I, I've been busy working on this thing all day uh, since yesterday, and I forgot to record. I was just sitting here thinking, man, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting to film. Uh, headlights on these things kicking my ass. You know, it's hard enough to work on a Fiero Trans Am or any car that has uh, electromechanical pop-up headlights. And um, yeah, I've had a bunch of distractions today. A lot of uh, visitors. So as I explained earlier, 
the 82 through 86 Trans Ams and Fieros, I think those are the only Pontiac GM vehicles that use these. Were there any other cars with pop-up headlights? So, and they changed the system after these because these suck. They knew they sucked. They failed a lot. They basically have, uh, when they wind up to one side or the other, they shut themselves off basically. Then you reverse the system. Typically they have plastic gears and bushings in here which wear out, the contacts wear out. So there's guys that rebuild these and replace them with new metal gears and better builds. So I went ahead and paid, I got like 500 bucks in these two motors. Now this one, actually this one works and it works fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and replace both of them because if the other one broke, this one's gonna break. And I want them to, I'm just gonna replace it. Trust me. So this one's been replaced. And so looking up in here, it was easier just to take this arm off rather than trying to disconnect it. And I had to, you know, getting to these bolts from both sides is the tricky part with this radiator in the way and all this goofy. And by the way, we're going to try to figure out some things with it. This radiator is supposed to go the other way. See where these brackets are? These should be like here flush and it should be going the other way. But because of the hood placement, it would be hanging way down here. So we're trying to figure this out. But anyway, we'll get to that some other time. Just trying to get these headlights to work. And so I had a problem where I got it all hooked up. I thought, okay, it's going to work. And then they went up, they wouldn't go back down. And then there was a ground short somewhere. The headlight switch started smoking, popping fuses. And I never did really figure out what the problem was. I just went through cleaning contacts and wiggling things around until it started working again. And that's really the problem with these kind of kit cars is that they just don't do a good job of wire looming and doing things correctly the way we do on our time machines and our night riders. So this right here is loose and uh, this is what operates that. And so I'm trying to get this mounted and that's what I'm working on right now. And this is gonna be a pain in the ass. I'm not gonna be able to record this, but basically I gotta get a bushing in there, get this bolt through there, get these tight and then get this arm mounted back on there. And that's gonna happen now. Trying to get to all these little cables and this is the hard, it's like these sharp little plastic things are everywhere and just my fingers and my, my dang head. I have bumped my head more times than I want to count. I need a gosh darn, um, like a hat, you know, like a little beanie to wear. Now, these relays get pretty cruddy. If you've ever messed with these, they're always full of this like black grease. I cleaned them out with electrical contact cleaner and then I filled them with dielectric grease. And uh, I'm assuming that as soon as I plug this in, it's gonna come to life and suck itself down since the light is off. So, if it's working properly. Make sure I get this little harness in the right spot. Make sure my fingers aren't in the way because it's powerful. There it goes. See how it, it did? Pulled itself right down. And I gotta mount this back to the rail here, it's just for holding it, it's not a ground. Let's try the old uh, door here. And see if the lights work. Shit. Why didn't that one open? Come on. I've been at this for hours. Really? Damn it. Well, that one works.
Damn it. What the? What? This is what I'm dealing with. And the brights are on. I can't get them to go off. Ugh. You know, it would have been so much better if they had just put like one bar across here somehow and one motor that operated both instead of having two separate motors. It doesn't make sense to me. What? What the fuck? Seriously? I can't put, what the? I just don't understand it. This one's working, kinda. This one over here, I mean, I put a new relay on it, I cleaned it. The grounds are all good. Shit. I'm wondering if this motor isn't bad from the guy that rebuilt it. Man, I really don't want to have to send this thing back because that one has been acting goofy. And, you know, I'm thinking that what the problem is, is as I was telling you about how the motor works, when it winds down, as soon as it, um, the way it's designed is that once it becomes under tension, it sucks that cap down or pushes it up and that's how it makes um, its connection. So like, I bet if I come over there and touch it, you know, yeah, see, look at that. It's just not making good contact for some reason. Now, before one of you boneheads in the comments says something, yes, I know the headlights on the Countach are round. This one has square. I know there's nothing I can do about it. Kuntosh is also longer and has a V12. Hey! They worked. I wonder how the battery is. Maybe the battery's low. Ah! I can't get the bright lights to go off. This is the engine. One of my plans that I wanted to do for cooling is you see that empty hole back there? There's one on either side. Now on a real Lamborghini, you would have a vertical diagonal mounted radiator. They would drop down in here with fans. It would suck air through here and then blow, vent it out the back. This is solid. There's actually nothing under there. This is all just, they just screwed this top on top if you look down in there, you'll see there's, well, you can't see through the mesh, but it's just nothing. So I want to cut this out, right? See where these shock towers are back here. So there's room in that little cavity back there and here as well, I'm sure, right? To put actual rear mounted radiators. Now we're talking about our engine options. I was talking to my buddy Firo Mike today, who was looking at the car. And we were looking at that other, the other Lamborghini that I have over there, the, the, the Fiero that has the V8 Cadillac engine in it that I wanted to put in. 
We got to talking about the LS4 front wheel drive motor. He said, dude, that's a way better motor to put in here. And quite frankly, you should just do that. And I was, but he said, you you know, with the air conditioning and cooling, it's gonna be a hassle. I said, look, we got all this room back here in the trunk that I don't actually need for anything. Like if I really, really wanted to get creative and put like a, put the radiator or a radiator, put the radiator back here or something or another radiator, just have multiple radiators with electronic um, fuel pumps. You could do that. There's always a solution. And the thing is, is people's minds get stuck in the factory options. You know, the people that made this, they were thinking about a Fiero. But there's other things you can do. See, a Lamborghini doesn't have a radiator up front. Right? They, they solve that problem by not putting it there. A Lamborghini, Countach, uses these NACA ducts in here to, to have that long, vertically, diagonally placed radiators, one on each side, that vent out here, and then also vent out the top. And then they have more ventilation coming out the back. So you don't have to do it like a uh, Fiero. You know, the, the thing that's so frustrating is that it's totally random. You know, if it was one thing all the time, that's something that you could work on, you know? And the thing is, is that it, it works sometimes perfectly, sometimes other times. Um, the fuse that operates this motor has blown a few times. So obviously something's hanging up. All of the relays have been replaced, cleaned, filled with dielectric grease, including the contacts. The motors are brand new. The switch is brand new. I put a new switch in. The fuse, I took the fuse out, cleaned it, pinched them together a little tighter, put a good fuse in there. And you know, it just is random. Look at that, they're not coming up. What the hell? And then that, you know, it's just working completely randomly. And that's the thing that's driving me mad. And I have to wonder like, is the problem really, are the motors not good? You know, the rebuilt motors that the guy did, maybe those are the problem. Because when that old motor was on, it worked every time. I'm starting to think that the dude's rebuilt motors are the problem because look at that. Doesn't make sense. And, and what's happening here is not the relay, but it's the, um, see, it's completely random. And when you have a random result like that, it's really hard to diagnose the problem, you know? One of the things Hoovy was really impressed with with this car was the paint and finish, which up close is a little rough, but if you've seen most Ferraris and Lamborghinis, they have pretty rough paint finishes. And this one's, you know, it looks good. I mean, even if you see it and you don't think it's real and you go, oh, it's a kit car, you still have to say like, still a beautiful car. You know, I know it's not like the real thing, but like, let me put it to you this way. When I go to the strip club and I see a girl and I know that she's been enhanced and what I'm seeing is not real, they're fake. They're still real nice. I like the shape. You know what I'm saying, right? Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. It's gotta be, it's gotta be these motors. It's gotta be. Because there's just no other explanation for the randomness. It's not the relays. You know, there's power going to it because if I go over there and touch it, it'll go, right? Yeah, see that? Just the tiniest little bit of motion sets it off. Hey, look, the brights went off. What? Finally, I got the brights off. I don't know how. What in the hell? This car is possessed. 
Let's see if they go down. Nope. Son of a bitch. This is what I've been dealing with, folks, for two days. I'm done with this thing for the night. I'm gonna put it back up in the air and put the DeLorean back underneath it and um, relax. There's still a lot that has to be done to this car. It doesn't have air conditioning and you know I was thinking okay maybe I keep the Fiero motor, spruce it up a little uh, and then maybe put an electric air conditioning system in it. That's an option that I thought about. I think the best thing to do that I might do is look at the LS4 front wheel drive engine, adapt it to fit in here. Then I've got a fuel injected, reliable, modern drivetrain with a OBD2 computer on it. We'll add some cooling and that'll solve the problems. Well, it's not gonna solve my problems, but at least it'll, it's not gonna solve these problems. The problems that I'm having here are all electrical issues, right? These are all electrical issues that are just from bad execution. All right, I'm wrapping up for the night. I'm pretty tired. I'm gonna try to uh, try to get these doors done maybe tomorrow, I'll try to work on this gate situation some more. Uh, um, I got band rehearsal tomorrow with my Judas Priest tribute band. That's another project I do. Um, oh, I'm gonna give one freebie. This is not a paid endorsement. I did not get this for free. You know, one of my friends, Zerk Singer, he plays in the band Kiss. And uh, we go out to lunch every day and stuff. And um, I was over at his house and I saw this sitting on his table. He had a couple of these. And I go, oh, I know, that's the Ridge Wallet. He goes, yeah, I don't know what it is. A fan gave me a couple of them. And uh, they were custom made with Kiss on them, right? How cool is that? And I was like, oh man, you know, all my YouTuber friends have these, they endorse them. I'd like to try it out. And he gave it to me to try it out. And so I've been using it now for about a week or so, and I kind of dig it. I've tried a couple of the other mechanical wallets and none of them work. I don't want to name any names, but the ones that like shoot out the top and they fan out the side, they, they're so cumbersome and they're big and they're bulky and they, they don't work. Really, all this thing is is just a rubber band that holds your cards together. That's what it is. It's just a, it's just a little springy rubber bandy thing you put your cards in. And you know, I normally carry that big giant biker wallet. The thing's the size of like a six inch Subway sandwich. It's gigantic, right? And it's so big, because I got like 15 cards in it and all this other junk that I'd take it out whenever I get in the car and I had the chain and it was just getting to be a pain in the ass. I've worn it my whole life. And, and I started being a little bit more minimal with the, the you know, like a, spreading stuff out in my pocket. Like another freebie I'll give is there's this company called M Clip, right? And I've been using this about 10 years. This is an M Clip. 
right? You just put that on your money, right? And you could use that for your cards too. And so I always carry just one card and my ID in my pocket because you pull that out the most. And when I'm doing small transactions, you know, like uh, just small stuff, I have a credit card to use for that because if that card gets compromised and I have to get rid of it, it's not tied to any of my subscriptions and things. I have, I have a subscription card that I use for things like that and I never use it outside of the house. It's only used online. So if it gets compromised, I know it only happens online. Then I have certain cards. You know, living here in Vegas, I've talked about many times, you have to have casino cards, cards for MGM, cards for Caesars. They get you free parking, get you points, get you food, all those things. I also use my Spirit card because I'm a gold member on Spirit Airlines because I fly back and forth from here to Dallas every other week. And so anyway, you know, I carry about 12, 13 cards with me at all times. And this thing's getting pretty thick, you know? And so, um, but I, I kind of dig it. So I'm giving a free, a freebie for Ridge. I know that Dan Ridge sent me an email, you know, probably a year or two ago asking me if I wanted to be a endorser. And, you know, he gives you a free one and some money. And I just not really, you know, I, do, I will do that if only if I use the product. So since I'm using it now, Ridge, if you catch this, uh, send me another email and maybe I'll do some official commercials for you. But I'm giving you a freebie just because uh, they gave a free one to my friend and Kiss. I don't know if they made it or a fan did it and lasered it on there, but it looks cool. I've got this one. I'm going to try it out. I need to get one of these in red. That's what I need. So um, one freebie for Ridge, uh, not a paid endorsement. When I do a paid one, I will tell you. So, um, but I, I will only endorse something that I will personally use. At the time they offered it, I was like, nah, I'm not interested. Now that I have it, I'm kind of digging it. It's kind of cool. Uh, and maybe it's something that you would want. So, you know, if you decide you want to buy one, send them a message that said, I saw this on Video Bob's channel. Throw me a bone. All right. I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed. I want to wash up. Uh, I've had enough of this today. It's Lamborghini. It's got me pissed. It's going to be great, though, when it works. That's going to be fun. All right. Let's get out of here. Subscribe to Video Bob because I know where you live, bitch.